In this last lesson, I want to show you a combination of different techniques that we've seen and bring them all together and show you a few other tips and tricks which are super fun to probably create what will be my favorite of this class. So join me here and I want to show you an example. One of the first pages, actually the first page that I ever did in this particular Bible was this one here for Joshua 1.9. And I just love how this turned out. This is Distressings, which I've blended onto the Bible page. And I went ahead and die cut these letters and put them on there, masked over them, and then was able to go over them without them actually having any distress ink getting on those letters. So then when I peeled it away, they were nice and white. And that is similar to what we're going to do, but on kind of an epic scale. So you can see that because I've not put any gesso down on this, which I did not, it's actually it kind of bled through a tiny bit. You can see some of the color there. I'm not worried about that. At some point, I'll put clear gesso over this, and I'll get started on it and have some extra color to go with that. But on this one, I find that if I were going to want to put distressing down and blend and not have it bleed through, I would have to use the Dana Wakely clear gesso. I could not use any other one because nothing else will actually let those distressings blend. I can literally take my finger, swipe it across the page, and all the color will come off if I use any other products. So you must use Dina Wakely Clear Gesso, or just do what I'm going to show you today, which is straight on the page, and definitely my most recommended, because the color is much more vibrant and beautiful. So I'm going to be just adjacent to this page here, and I've got all of this space here to work with, which is always absolutely a blast when you have so much free space here to work with. And I'm going to get started by doing some die cutting. So I'm going to bring over the Big Shot machine. I'm going to just push this out of the way for a minute here. And I'm going to cut this globe here. So what I'm going to do is take out this die. It's super int intricate. I love how beautiful this is. This is probably one of my favorites so far. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to get out some mass paper. And all this is, is this really neat, I think it's probably one of my favorite supplies right now. It's actually really cool. You can just peel it apart and it's sticky on this side and that is your release paper. It comes off. And this will allow me to cut whatever shape I want and stick it down as a mask and then go over it. So I'm going to get some scissors and just cut the shape that I want here. And then I'm going to take this, put it on my cutting plate, put a plate over the top, and I'm just going to put it right through my Big Shot machine. Crank it through. And there we go. Got this die. And you can see it's got lots and lots of parts in here. And I'm going to just use this piercer tool to help me get all of the pieces out. So as this is going to be a bit messy, I'm actually just going to use this cutting plate to catch everything. So I'm just going to start pushing this out. And you'll start to see it come out. And I don't want any of those extra pieces. so. I'm going to see if I can get them to come out here. And if I have any problems, then I can use the piercing tool. You can see they make real mess because these are stickers, basically. But it's worth it. So I'm get those last little bits with this. Punch that out. Don't want to miss anything because then that will mask an area that we don't want masked. So take your time on it and get everything out. Okay, that looks good. So I'm just going to pull this out of the way, and I want to save this. So I don't need this anymore. And what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to save this circular thing here. I've got this. I'm going to get some of this out of my way for a moment. And then I'm going to take one more of 
this mask paper. And I'm actually going to take my die, which is very full of stickers, <laughs> set it on here. And I'm just going to use a pen to mark the outside edge. Uh, I want a die that's the exact same size as this, and as I don't have one, and I don't want anything to be um, showing in this whole area, then I'm just going to go in and actually cut around this with my scissors to make sure that I have a circle. And I don't need to do a perfect job. I just want to get as close as I can right on the inside so that it covers the inside, but it doesn't leave a white mark on the outside. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So that's great. I can use this other piece on another project because it's a nice size still. I'm going to set that aside and now I've got three elements and you can see they're blue. I'll just flip them over so you can see. I've got three elements here. I'm going to need all of these to do my Bible page. So what I'm going to do is bring this over and try and get all the stickers off me because there's plenty of them. <laughs> and pull this back over here. And what I want to do first is take this one. Now this blue part is the release paper and this white part is the sticker. So I'm going to put this just about there. That's what I would like to see. So what I'm going to do is just peel that back. And pull it apart. That is in itself quite cool. <laughs> I love how beautiful that is. And I'm just going to make sure I've got it standing straight up so it doesn't end up looking funny. I don't want a crooked globe. And now that I've got this on here, it will stick on here, but it's not going to hurt my Bible page. It's got enough tack to stick, but not too much. So that's great. But I want to color the inside of this, and I don't want the rest of the page around it to get color. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to take this and I'm going to protect the area around it. This is just me being sneaky and you will see it all come together in a moment here. So let's get that out of the way and just line that up with the edge of your circle in one area and it will follow you around to the other areas. Okay. And I would like to just stick this underneath my page. And I'm going to use that same set that you saw me use before for stamping in a previous lesson, this hard plastic and this. I'm just going to actually just use the hard plastic. and. For right now, I'm going to set that right under here, and that will just give me a nice hard surface to work on, which I think is ideal for what I'm trying to do here. So now I'm going to go in. I want to stay where the masking is. You can use a bigger piece if you want to protect your work surface even more. And I'm just going to use one of these blending tools, and I'm going to use hickory smoke. I think this is such a beautiful color. I'm going to go in and load up my color. And I'm just going to use a tag to tap off once every single time. I don't want too much ink on here. And then I'm going to go in and just start to add some color to my Bible page. Now, if I add so much, it will start to go through to the other side. And I'll have some color there to work with another project. So it's really up to you how hard you push. So Press really lightly as you begin this project, and it will help you to gauge how much you are going to get down, and then you won't find yourself disappointed that you've gone straight through, because this will bleed straight through immediately if you do it really hard and you don't tap off. So tap off onto something first, and then just go in here and gently do this. Matthew 28 verse 19 comes when Jesus has risen from the dead after he died on the cross for us. 
and you find him giving a great commission, as people call it. So he spoke, and we see here that it says in this NASB Bible, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And this is a great commandment of us going out and discipling people. It's kind of like apprenticeship, you know, raising people up and showing them the way and helping them to go out and do the same things that you have learned to do yourself. And I want to take a fun creative twist on this and just encourage you to take what you've learned in this class and begin to tell the story to your friends and gather your friends and teach this to them so that they can go on and create as well and learn this really fun process. This is something that has immensely helped my personal journey and made scripture come alive to me in a really special way. And I would encourage you to not just keep it for yourself, but share it with those around you. And don't be discouraged if not everyone is excited about it, but look for those who can be excited with you and help them along the way and join the class together so that you can go and make disciples and create together and tell that story of what it is that God's speaking to you about on the pages of your Bible through creative bliss. Okay, now that I've done this, I am done with the hickory smoke. So I'm gonna set that color aside. But what I'm going to do next is stay in this mode of blending. And I'm going to introduce some other colors to the actual page now. So what I'm gonna do is protect the globe. So I'm gonna pull this off, but not the globe. Keep that globe nice and intact where it is. Set that aside. And now I'm going to go in with my circle and go over the top. What this is going to do is just really keep me from adding distressing on top of the globe. So it's just the opposite. So this might take you a moment to get your head around what you're doing here. But if you give it a try once, then you will get the hang of it. So line that up. And I can actually see that that feels slightly bigger. So I may feel like it was a bit too big. So what I'm going to do is just shave around this just a tiny bit because I don't want to have a little white mark around the edge when I finish. And I've got just enough of a mark around the globe to help me with this. So I'm just going to make it a slightly smaller circle and then cover it up here. So that is good enough for me. Give that a nice press down and you might have to remind it that it needs to stay down every now and then because it's designed not to have too harsh of a line. And I'm going to start with some black soot and I'm going to have to be putting up with it being a little bit softer because I want to get right into the edge of the page here. But what I don't want to do is have this page get touched by my distress ink. So I'm going to grab myself this right here, cover up my page, and then I've got one under and one over. I find these super handy. And now I can go in with my black soot and I'm going to start with one color. I'm going to work my way up and I'll just give you a peek here at some of the colors that are going to work their way in as we go. So I'm going to start with black soot. So I get myself a blending foam and I don't really want to use the same color of our same foam on every single one. I want to change them out. So I'm going to tap on there, see how much ink that would have just put straight on the page and that would have gone right through. So I don't want that. So now I'm just going to introduce a tiny bit of black soot right along the bottom here. And it's just the suggestion of the color. I'm not really hoping to add much black soot at all. I 
and then I will do this with my different colors going in carefully each time making sure that I am not adding a huge amount of color or ink just a subtle amount and blending in between each color as I go. You can see I'm just going in and adding a little bit of color into the different sections so that they merge together a bit. And then I'll just finish off with this last color, which is the picked raspberry. I'm going in a bit strong here and this will definitely bleed through but I'm okay with that and we'll happily show you what it looks like on the back side so that you can get an idea of whether you would prefer to gesso your page or not. The nice thing about just dressing is that they are transparent so all this color doesn't actually affect my ability to see the words. Although the picked raspberry is pink and it is going over some words in red, so that will affect the understanding of the red lettering, but it isn't actually covering it at all. I just wanted a punch of pink at the top and then I need a little bit of this wilted violet to go up inside of it, like you've seen me do with the other colors. Just draw that color in there a little bit. Now that isn't perfect, but I'm okay with that, and I'm going to draw my attention to other details now. Okay, so now I'm going to take off what I was protecting. I'm just going to move these to one side. So I've got a little bit of breathing space for myself. And I'm just going to pull this off. So you see that I had this masking paper covering this. So I'm going to pull that off. And now I'm going to go in and pull off the other one. And you can see that I've got a little bit of color here. So I might actually just go in with my tool, pinching it like this, and just See if I can add a bit of color right there. Does that make sense? So I can take off the sharpness of that color. And I can do that, and it may make a difference, and it may not, but I'm not really that bothered. So what I'm going to do is just peel this back now. And just be gentle with it. And there you go. So you can see that I now have the globe on here and it's one color and then the sky is another color. So that is how you can do that. And of course, I could actually save this sticker and use it in another project if I wanted. So now that I have gone ahead and taken that off, I'm going to add a half moon right here. I think this is really cute. So I'm gonna put it about right here 
and I could go in with a number of different things. I could use a Signo gel pen and go in there, which would look neat. But I think what I'm going to do actually is just use this Moonlight White Brilliance ink pad. And this is a pigment ink pad and I will need to dry it. But what I'm going to do is use one of my blending foams. Get some on there. You won't be able to see it on my pad because my pad is white and so is this, but there is some there. So I'm going to put this where I want it. And I think about right here is where I'd like it. And then I'm going to take this and just spread it right into where the moon is. Being careful not to go outside of the edges. It doesn't look like much, and I think that it will show through a little bit, which I'm okay with. I just want it to lighten up. So I'll add that in. And then peel that off. So there's my moon, and I want to ensure that that is dry before I go in with anything else. So I'm going to give it a quick dry. Pigment ink does take a much longer time to dry. It tends to sit on the surface of paper, so it's quite important that you give it a quick dry or leave it for a while before you come back to it. Okay. Now, I want to add a sentiment here. I've got a great stamp for this. I love this stamp here. It says, live, create, tell the story, which is what this is really about, this lesson. And I am going to put this on my acrylic block. It's a clink stamp. And that will go right in here. I really like this. And I just want to give you a quick tip here. I personally think that rather than going in with my brand new archival ink jet black, ink here. This is a super juicy pad and this one will give me a lot of ink and if I've got one of these then I would probably stamp it once and then go and stamp it on something you know stamp it once and then stamp it on your actual page and that would mean that you would have a second generation stamp and it would probably give you less ink on your paper which means it would bleed through less. The best way to do this is probably to use an old beat up one like mine. Um, that I have here and this is just getting super old and it is much drier so I'm going to try and use this one. It will mean that I'll have to work a little bit harder to make sure that I'm covering all areas of my stamp but the juiciness of this stamp will be less and so the bleed through will be less. So I've got some on there but before I do that I'm going to use this silicone mat and the plastic thing and stick it right underneath so that I can have a nice hard surface to stamp on. Just freshen this up and make sure I've got everything. And I'm happy with that and then I'm just going to find where I want this and stamp it down. That's perfect, it looks great. Okay, last thing, I want to add some stars to this. So I'm going to pull this out now. And I think I'm gonna use this here again to make sure that I can get some stars that are similar to the moon. And then I'll go in with a little bit of a surprise at the end, which I think is quite fun. So here I have a stencil. This is from Prima, and I think these are the perfect size. I really like the stars on this. So what I'm going to do is place them where I like them, and I'm just going to avoid the area where I have the moon and where I have this sentiment, and of course, the earth as well. So I like that. If I'm going to have a problem with holding this still, then I would just use some washi and hold it in place, and that would help me to not have a problem with it at all. So I'm just going to set this here and give it a good pounce, get some on there. 
And now I can pounce this and it's just going to go on there and not go under my stars because they are nice and dry. Not adding a lot of liquid, which will really help. So I'm not pushing back and forth. That would probably cause there to be ink pushing underneath, but this will keep things pretty well away. And just add as much as you want. And the darker you go, the more bright these will get. I'm doing it on the side here where I'm right in between the moon and the sentiment, but I'd like to add a little star here and there. So just getting in there nice and sideways and almost finished. I think I'm going to stop there without doing any of these and just have a peek at it. So if I'm holding on here, then I can lift it up and see what it's looking like. I think I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to let go. And there she is. I quite like that. I think it's really pretty. And what I can do is just give it a quick dry and do one last thing, which is super fun. Everybody loves a bit of shimmer. So I'm going to add a bit of shimmer to this. Just get the lid on my ink while I'm drying this. Okay, I've got two options here for shimmer, and I love them both. I'm just going to get these stencils out of the way. And what I have here is this really cute little set here. These are so tiny, and there's plenty in here to last for a while. But these are really nice pearlescent watercolors, and they're from Kuretake. I think this is really nice on here. And I could just use a paintbrush and get in there with my shimmer and give these stars a nice little bit of sparkle. But I think what I'm going to do instead, even though these are really, really nice, is I'm just going to use my Wink of Stella, which I think if you've used this, you know how fun the Wink of Stella is. And this is just like a water brush, actually, but it's filled with some shimmery stuff and I've got some clear shimmer in there. So I'm just going to go in over top of my stars. And I think personally the best way to do that is to come in with my stencil again and put it over the top. And I need to be careful and check on my back to make sure that I don't have any of my ink that's bled through that would then smear. It looks like I don't. So I'm just going to lay this right back on top, find exactly where it was before, which is not hard at all. And then I'm going to use that to just go in. As long as I don't poke this underneath, it will just sit on top. But I might have a little bit that goes through, and that doesn't bother me a bit. This might be hard to pick up on camera. Sometimes these look better in person than they do behind a camera, but they're just really beautiful. And trust me, if you haven't ever tried putting some shimmer on things, you've got to give it a try. It's so beautiful. Okay, there we have it. So here is some shimmery stars to go with my scene. And I think I love the way this has turned out. I think this is a really fun page. I really love the way it looks. And let me show you the back of this, as promised. You can see that this is got some color on it. You can see the stamping right in here. And you can see the globe 
there is reference to all this color here. And personally, if I was going to use this side of this page for Mark, I would just go ahead and clear gesso this twice so that I didn't get any of the colors on this side bleeding through. And then I would just create on this page and use this color to my advantage. So I'm not worried about this. I love it. And I love how vibrant this is. So I'm really pleased with this. I hope you've enjoyed this class and have felt inspired to grab yourself a Bible or an art journal and spend time creating in the Word of God and let it really grow you personally and inspire you in your own journey. And that you'll grab a friend and do this with them as well. And I hope that you know that you can find all of these supplies that I've used at scrapbook.com. Thanks again for joining me.